Up to now, the traits that we have considered have mostly been categorical traits. Either round seeds or wrinkled seeds, red eyes or brown eyes, an enzyme is made or an enzyme isn't made. These traits are called categorical traits. Contrast them to a trait like height, or the risk that you'll develop type 2 diabetes. Height isn't categorical, but it's rather continuous or quantitative. And if you take the height of a very large number of people and you plot them, you end up with a distribution that you are likely familiar with. A bell curve or a normal distribution. And it turns out that a huge number of quantitative traits are normally distributed. And as such, this forms the theoretical basis of a lot of the rest of this chapter. And a nice thing about a trait that is normally distributed is that you can describe that distribution using only two numbers. And the first is the center, right? The mean, designated x bar. And this is just the arithmetic average of all of the observations that you made. So you add up all of your observations and you divide it by the number of observations. That's easy enough. The second number is variance, which we'll call S squared. And S squared is a measure of how spread out this distribution is. Once you've computed the mean, you can compute the variance by just taking the sum of the difference of each measurement and the mean, taking the square of that, and dividing the whole thing over n minus 1. And why n minus 1 instead of n? Don't ask, it's complicated. Finally, there's a closely related value that is perhaps even more useful than just the variance, and that's the standard deviation, which is just s. Right, so this is the square root of the variance. And it's useful because the standard deviation is actually in the same units as the mean. So if we're measuring height in inches, then the units of mean are inches, and the units of the standard deviation are also inches. Graphically, if you have a normal distribution like this, then the standard deviation is the distance from the mean to kind of this inflection point, right? Oh, I'm sorry, I should use S instead of sigma. We'll come back to sigma here in a moment. There we go. So this kind of inflection point right here, where the curve goes from concave to convex, and so, two more quick points before we leave the normal distribution right here. And the first is that x bar and s squared, the mean and uh, the mean and the variance, are computed using a set of observations. Right? They're computed using a sample, using a set of measurements. And so, we might find, I don't know, a thousand people and measure their height. But what we're really interested in is how the height is distributed in the underlying population, right? So not a thousand humans, but all humans. And the sample mean and the sample variance are just estimates of the underlying population mean and population variance. And so for a standard distribution like this, we write these as mu. and sigma squared. And this, of course, explains why I wrote sigma here and then went, no, back up. <laughs> we'll come back to sigma here in a moment. So second, then, and the, the, the second thing about normal distributions before we leave them is that these two values tell us a great deal about the underlying population. 
perhaps the most important thing that they tell us is how much of the population is kind of squished up here towards the mean versus how much of it is out under these tails. And so, for any normal distribution, about 68% of the people in this, uh, I'm sorry, of the individuals in this population are within one standard deviation of the mean. 95% of the individuals in this population are within two standard deviations of the mean. And over 99% of the individuals in this population are plus or minus three standard deviations from the mean. So, if you see an individual whose measurement, whose height, whose trait is more than three standard deviations away from the mean of this distribution, that individual's phenotype is quite rare. And we're starting here again because a huge number of quantitative traits are normally distributed. In fact, it's actually reasonable to assume that a quantitative trait is normally distributed unless you know for sure otherwise. And we know that traits vary, right? They vary like this. The next question to ask is what causes that variation? 